I was up in Thailand within another week or so. I immersed myself in the language lessons when I got there and then I started approaching different groups that were working in trafficking. And so I started working with them and then I started running my own operations. And that's where Grey Man started. Some of the risks that I faced in the early days were mainly to do with the fact that I was operating on my own. When I went to these brothels, I pretended to be a pedophile. I said I was looking for young girls. I'd check them out, pay the money, take them back to safe houses, and then having an interpreter explain to them that they can leave if they want and we'll take care of them, take them back to their villages or put them in a centre. What he did initially was very unorthodox and it was, it was quite naive. And the problem was that he was taking kids from pimps and he was running the Gortland in those early days with the, uh, the Thai authorities because they may have thought he was a pedophile himself. All I wanted to do was rescue these five kids. I thought, I'll do that, and then I've done my bit for the world. Um, it took me three months, but I fulfilled the promise to my daughter. But the problem's just too big, so I couldn't let it go. Initially, John was trying to finance everything. He never really asked for a cent from anybody, and um, he, uh, you know, from, from a, uh, a modest sum of money, he achieved an awful lot. I decided after a while that me on my own just wasn't enough. And so I started talking to Rotary Clubs to see if I could raise funds to set up an organisation. And the first Rotary Club that I spoke to, Russell Hawkeswood was a member. You can see Chiang Mai fairly clearly there. I could just see that there was a huge need for what he was doing. What we're doing up there is uh, rescuing your education prevention. I guess because I had some military background, I had about seven years in the Army Reserves. You know, I felt some synergies with what John was doing in, in, in that frontline area. Now, Russell's got a background in accountancy and he has you know, navigated that path through the bureaucratic maze that is setting up a charity in Australia. And without him, we just would not exist. I think people think that if they find their purpose in life, then everything will be a rose garden. But then doing that brings up its own set of problems. Um, how do you pursue this when you've got a wife and kids and dogs and commitments? John and Miso met about two years ago now. Miso is a, a beautiful Japanese lady. It was really lovely to see a, a couple finding love again in their late 40s. I met him at the cafe near my home. One month later, he left a message that he never lived my life. And three months later, he proposed to me, and another three months later, we married. <laughs> After we married, like two weeks later, he fly to Thailand to work for the gray man. And I can't believe that. I couldn't believe that. Formalize the renewal of the wedding vows. I sometimes want to say, stop it. <laughs> there have been a few challenges along the way. John's a really hard worker. He's working full time for a government organisation in Brisbane. Um, and of course, Grey Man um, also takes up a lot of time, particularly with the need to travel overseas a lot. Let me bind these hands. Of a we were on a bit of a roller coaster ride there for a long time. Here, here we were living in this relationship being very close and yet being pulled apart because of all the work I was doing with Grey Man. And so it's just caused a lot of friction. We draw on each other's strength. One day I asked him, why? Because you can't fix by yourself. And he said, yes, but he can't tell the girl that, sorry, this is big problem is so big and I can't fix it. Bye. And he said, he can't say that. The nature of trafficking has changed in Thailand. It has gone more and more underground. It's very difficult to find underage children in brothels anymore. Because of police crackdowns, they've moved more into karaoke bars and um, even restaurants and places like that, uh, laundries. They're very careful about who they give the girls to, so they 
you have to build trust with them first. So, uh, so Lolly's age are 13 years old. The Burma case recently was one where we looked at encouraging a pimp in the town of Mersai to, uh, to bring children across the border from Burma. Uh, the pimp told us that he could supply regular numbers of kids from Burma. Tonight we're going into a karaoke bar that we've been into before. We're just going back to continue the association. It may or may not go anywhere. It just depends on how well we can cultivate him to believe that we're the genuine article Western pedophiles that want young girls. Last year we started operating with the police, so now every time we do a raid, we have the police involved. Once a girl is rescued, she's placed directly in the hands of the social workers. Where we know that the kids will be given um, food, psychological attention, uh, training, you know, a whole range of things that will give them an option for the future, not in a brothel. One aspect of Grey Man's work that really impresses me is their capacity for cooperation with other organizations so that they can specialize in the work that they're doing in investigation and they then allow us to do the aftercare and the follow-up on these cases. I don't think that this case will probably proceed too much further. He's gone a bit cold on the idea because of the dangers involved, because he said he can't find kids that have ID cards, which means that it becomes dangerous for him. His suggestion was that he takes us into Burma and to his house. He would go and find some young boys or girls for us and bring them to his house. We, we abandoned that. We could have done it had we gone into Burma but at the moment we think that's exposing our people a bit too far. Most of Grey Man is voluntary. We only have one full-time paid staff in Thailand, that's the Director of Investigations. A single pimp will traffic thousands of girls. If I put that bastard away, I will stop him from traffic thousand of girls in the future. He was in the SAS, the Thai SAS, and um, he has training in covert operations and he's well known to the police and, uh, and trusted by the police. The grey man provides us the solid intelligence to make the job done really well. Only two or three months past, we have some successful cases from the grey man assistant we will assist with the expenses. The reason for that is that the Thai government doesn't have the funding, they don't have the budget. You know, here, the police often buy their own weapons. <laughs> Organisations like Grey Man have a role to play because we are small, fast moving, can make decisions quickly and get in and do the job. Uh, the largest case that we've been involved in to date was a trafficking case we called the Laos case. That was a case that the Thai police had been aware of for about two years. No, 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 he doesn't say anything. We got uh, fresh intelligence from Sompop Jantraka. Sompop Jantraka has been nominated twice for the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And I think he's rescued about 2,000 children. I hope that you will come back to Sweden. To get Sompop's trust in this alone was a, a major coup for us. 